Welcome to our Wednesday service here at Austin Grove Baptist Church. I will remind you if you're in the area, uh, we are having our Wednesday night services in house, and uh, we would welcome you to come and uh, to be in person there. But we're we also are just glad that you're with us here on this Wednesday here. We're going to continue now and pick up where we were in the end at the end of March. We're going to be in First John, the uh, second chapter. We're going to pick up with uh, with verse seven. If you would first John the second chapter and we're going to pick up and begin reading with verse 7 so if you have your Bible I'd like to invite you to turn and we'll be reading out of King James Version this night I hope this day finds each of you well I hope you've had a, a, a good April and we look forward to even better May as we begin to see uh, spring uh, certainly continue to, to get warmer and warmer and we're heading towards summer very quickly so uh, turn with with me there if you would please here uh, to uh, chapter 2 1st John chapter 2 verse 7 uh, listen to these words if you would brethren I write no new commandment unto you but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning the old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning and the words John was writing and saying uh, to them that God, God has not replaced anything. He is simply, he is continuous, an ongoing issue, an ongoing thing of what's happening uh, there. Uh, and uh, it has not changed and God's word will not change. Uh, it is final, uh, what he says and so forth here. Listen to verse, verse eight as, as John continues to write, explaining and telling us a little bit more about what's going on and what he's uh, communicating to us. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness, he said, is past, and the true light now shineth. Now, we're beginning to see this was after the fact that Christ had already come. He had given his life. He has resurrected. He has ascended back to be with the Father in heaven. And John is writing and telling us that Christ, just as he had said, that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And uh, here John is uh, 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 once again going over this and repeating this to us and telling us now that he is that light there. He is that true light. And I want you to look at the last part of verse 8 where it records, he says, and the true light, it now shines. Jesus Christ is brighter today than he's ever been. He continues to shine forth every time we speak of him, every time we open his God's word, every time that we do a kind deed in the name of Jesus. Uh, he, he, the light of Christ continues to shine forth uh, from each of our lives and our hearts. And for that we, we rejoice. Look at verse 9. He that saith he is in the light. And look, at the, look what else that John continues to write. There, and, and, and this is happening even today, 2022. Um, there are many that say uh, that they're in the light. But listen to the middle part of verse 9. And he hateth his brother. In other words, if our lives are not speaking and showing Christ, uh, folks, we need to really scrutinize our lives and take a, a long, hard look at it because uh, it's very important that we realize whether we know Christ or whether we're living in a way and manner which is pleasing in God's eyes. So, so look as we continue reading here in verse 9. Let me bring this whole verse back, to, back together. He that saith that he is in the light and hateth his brother uh, is in darkness. He didn't say might be in darkness, was in darkness, uh, will be in darkness. The scripture says, and this is a present tense and it's ongoing, that he is in darkness even unto now, until now. Now look at verse 10. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. In other words, the love of Christ is being lived out, acted out, 
and that you're standing on that love and that you are professing that love and what others are seeing in you is love, not hatred, not bitterness, not anger, not deceit, not any of those things that would be contrary to what God's Word says. Then, then and only then is what the gospel, the, the Word of God is saying here is that, hey listen, when that is happening, when that is occurring, there's nothing that's going to stumble it about that. You're not just wandering aimlessly through life. You are living life in a way and manner which was intended by our Heavenly Father. Verse 11 continues, going to continue on this narrative, this whole passage here that we're reading here, uh, here today. Verse 11 says, but he that hateth his brother, once again he says, that person is in darkness and walketh in the darkness and listen to this next phrase in the middle part of verse 11. And they knoweth not whether he goeth. In other words, they literally are just wandering about aimlessly in life. There's a lot of that is going on. There are a lot of lives that literally, they're, it's like they're going nowhere. They're, uh, they're here, they're there, they're all around. They really do not have that stability that only God can give to us in knowing him as Lord and Savior and knowing that Christ uh, needs to be directing our paths instead of letting the world or the devil dictate to us really how we're going to live and how we're going to interact with one another. Christ taught us about relationships. He taught us about how to deal with one another. He taught us how that we, ought to, we should approach life and that is in love and care and concern. So important. And the last part of this verse 11 says, and that person, he walks in darkness and that person does not know whether he goeth. And here's the reason he does, he or she does not know it, because that darkness has blinded their eyes. That darkness has caused them to not be able to see and they're, and, and they're very content and they're very much willing to stay right where they're at because they see no need to change or for their lives to be transformed or to be, their lives to be disrupted in any shape or fashion because they see, not, see that it's nothing wrong. The darkness has blinded them to that. Be very cautious, the Word of God says. Be cautious that we're not letting the darkness overrule and overrun the light of Jesus Christ. Look with me at verse 12. John said, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for Christ's namesake. I write to you because I want you to know that your sins have been forgiven because you know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, and that he lives, and because he lives, you and I don't have to worry about it. Look at verse 13. And he said, also, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning, and I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. He said, I write to all ages, I write to all people, and I want them to be sure that you know the Father, that you know our Heavenly Father, that you know Christ. This, th this is the most important decision that anyone will ever, ever come to know. And that is knowing Christ as Lord and Savior. Without Him, there is no hope for the future. There is no future. For that future is without God. And a future without the Lord, folks, is in utter darkness away from our Lord. Look, look now, look at verse 14 here. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known Him that is from the beginning, I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome, and listen to the last phrase, that you've overcome the wicked one. This is what the scripture is saying, because you have, to the, to the fathers, he said, I write to you because you have known. You have walked with our Heavenly Father. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and you know the direction your life ought to go in. You know where you need to put your trust and faith in, and that needs to be in none other than Jesus Christ. You need to know that this is right in 
not just man's eyes, but it's right in God's eyes, how we're living, that we are professing him as Lord of our lives. And that that is why that we're that, that we're there. That's why it's so important that we're doing that. I want to stop right there where that we're uh, as we begin to see where the scriptures is saying and reminding us, listen, I'm writing to everyone. I'm writing to you to wake up, know the light of the world. Be, look in your life, let your life be part, enveloped by the light, light of Christ all around us. And how do we do that? How do we stay in the light of Christ? We do so by listening and hearing what God's Word says to the very best of our ability. Are we going to be perfect? Absolutely not. We are going to sin. We are going to disobey God from time to time. But our Heavenly Father stands ready to forgive us of our sins. Why? Because Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price for us so that you and I can live eternally with Him in heaven by simply asking Christ to come into our heart and life and asking for forgiveness. And Christ said, In no wise will I cast you out, but I will be there for you. And Jesus stands ready to do that very thing. I hope that this week has been a good week. If it hasn't, I pray that this week will get better as each day goes by. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, if we may, before we dismiss. Our Heavenly Father, we bow before you on this beautiful day. I listen to the beautiful birds. I look behind me with the beautiful roses that, Lord, that you have painted. You have brought them into the world so that we could enjoy the beauty thereof of yours. This beauty cannot hold a candle to anything of the beauty of the light of Christ that shines forth. Lord, I thank you for you inspiring John to write those these words to us that uh, you are the light of the world, Father. And that if we do not heed to what your word says and seek to live by your word, that we're in utter darkness. Father, I pray that if anyone is listening here today and they are not in the light of, of Christ, and they do not know Him, and they're living in darkness. Lord, I pray that they're going to see a need to come out from that darkness and to turn forth from their ways of living away from Christ and living in that shadows or that darkness. Lord, I pray that this will be the day that they'll turn and ask for your forgiveness. And I know, Father, you'll do that very thing. I know there are many prayer requests and uh, that of those that are listening uh, this day. Uh, Lord, will you heed and hear each one. And in accordance, with, in accordance with your will, Father, will you answer those prayers. If healing is take, needs to take place, I pray for that healing. If strength is needed, Lord, I pray for strength. I pray, Father, for wisdom, not of this world, but wisdom that only comes from heaven itself, from you, Father, that as we need that guidance. So, Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for each person that's listening. Keep them safe. Put that hedge of protection around them till we're going to be able to meet again, whether it's online or whether it's in person. Lord, direct our paths and draw us closer to thee. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. Have a wonderful remainder of the week.